If there's one thing that amuses me, it's pissing off Twitter, which is why I'm here to talk to you about Merryweather Comics. Before I get to the part where I uncancel him, I just want to give you a general vibe of his content, what he makes, and why people just seem to not like him all that much. So I figured what better way to start off the uncanceling of Merryweather than, than to start with one of the stupidest cancellations. <laughs> I'm excited. Are you excited? All right. So the big Chungus Chan meets Thanos. Now this is what, like a year old nearly, but it's just, it's so perfect. I love it so much. We've got a bunny girl, late, toast in the mouth, classic anime trope, Thanos coming out of a portal, cause why not? Leave her alone, dude. I'm not here for her. I'm here for you, bro. I love you, man. <laughs> The comic goes on for a couple more panels, but honestly, I feel like this sums it up right here. This tells you everything you need to know about the comic. Go check it out. It's up on Sankaku Complex or check out Meriwether's Twitter. It's probably on there somewhere, but it's like six months old. Now let's get to the fun part. This harmless comic about a bunny girl, Thanos and Goku meeting for no particular reason sparked, um, a shocking amount of outrage on Twitter. We got the uh, cute little anime loli. What's she putting in the, what's she putting in the tray? Uh, between the eyes, please. <laughs> oh, come on, the comic wasn't that bad. It was funny. Logged on after months to say I hate this. Okay, I'm out again. Oh uh, my God, Meriwether's comics are so dumb. They bring people back to Twitter so they can hate some more. Shut the fuck. No, not shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck. All right, whose idea was this restrained rage? This was a viscerally traumatizing reminder that like a good half of anime fans are perpetually stuck in 2012. Hey, hey, I am also perpetually stuck in 2012 and I am not apologizing for it. <laughs> I do not care. Uh, this one relatively straightforward, cease. How the fuck can you be this not funny? <laughs> I don't know, man, I'm laughing. Meriwether creating the worst comics you have ever seen. Hideous. I actually hate this website. Reading this felt like fighting for my goddamn life. Again, another straightforward one. I hate you. And it goes on and 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 on. So many of these. There's so many people who absolutely hate this comic. But my absolute favorite one is one I, I couldn't find on the uh, the twit longer or on this one, but it's in a hero hey video. So I'll, I'll uh, let him show you, read that one. Up. I pray for your fin and gold downfall every day with the help of my satanic overlord. I gotta say, man, I pray for your financial downfall has gotta be one of the most deliciously petty responses I've ever seen to a comic, by the way. It's just a dumb comic that he says himself he wrote in like a minute. So people just don't like Meriwether as is. People have a bias against him because they think his comics are dumb. And you know, get this, if you don't like a comic, hold on, let me zoom in for this one. You're gonna wanna hear this opinion, this hot take right here. If you don't like a comic, you can not read it. Don't follow Meriwether if you don't want to read his comics. <gasps> oh my God, did I just blow your mind? <gasps> Gasp, sound effects. Oh my God, I just blew Twitter's mind. You don't have to interact with things that you don't like. Oh my God, what a concept. You can avoid being unhappy if you avoid those things. Oh my God, what a concept. People's bias against Meriwether has motivated people to try and cancel him on many, many occasions. So let's get into that, shall we? So now that we understand that people just generally don't like his comics, let's take it one step further where another one of his comics got him in genuine trouble. This one actually got him death threats, not just memes. And that's uh, a comic that's a few panels long. I'll only show the two relevant ones. And there's a panel here where the NFT queen makes a NFT that she believes is gonna be worth million uh, dollars and some Chad comes along and copies the image. Right click, save as, baby. That's all it takes to steal an NFT. You know why? Cause they're worthless. God, I hate NFTs so much. <laughs> such a scam, such a blatant scam. And Meriwether pointed it out in a comic and you know what? Death threats happened. So this is a screenshot I passed around, but it's a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot. So if it looks a little wonky, that's because I drastically upped the contrast 
on the text so you can read it a little bit better. But he made this post shortly after making uh, his uh, comic about NFTs, and that's due to threats of violence and harassment. He decided to actually take the comic down. And there's one hot take that was uh, interesting to me that I actually wanted to highlight. And that's that, you know, people are saying that he cares too much about what other people think. I mean, who controls the, the account, you or the replies? Which I 100% agree with Mary when he says, getting barraged with insults, comments about suicide, and the selfie someone took with him in real life saying that they should have beaten him up is not worth having a comic up. I think people sometimes overlook the mental toll that harassment online can cause on a content creator. Like, yeah, you, someone who has gotten a couple of hate comments, will go, oh, uh, man, why can't big content creators just deal with it? It's not that big a deal. It's words, words, words. Like, no, guys, come on a constant barrage of harassment, even if it's exclusively online, still takes a toll on your sanity. This actually isn't in the original script. While I was taking a break from recording and editing, I actually was uh, searching YouTube to see if I could find anything that I missed. And I did. There's a Hero Hey video that I'm about to show you a couple clips of. It was a two part video, mind you. It was a, a whole saga where Meriwether got a copyright claim on one of their videos because uh, someone was claiming that they owned the design that he used. So let me show you a real quick summary of that particular video that I found while researching, while taking a break. A deviant art artist has filed a copyright strike on my YouTube channel because they drew a creeper design in 2016 with red eyes like mine. I wish I was joking. The original mob talker artist even responded to them and they're still claiming they own the design. What? YouTube investigated and determined the strike to be wrongful. The video is back up. Now, of course, we can't talk about Meriwether and controversy without talking about Samurai Buyer. So in case you don't know what Samurai Buyer is, here's a clip from Aki Dearest. Links are in the description below if you guys want to try any of their stuff from from Japan. We are now going to see what outfit Misaki has blessed me with for the thumbnail. And God said, look at me like, oh shit. I know for a fact that the outfit is in this bag. All right, Misaki, tell me what the thumbnail is. Wow, all right, okay. So first things first, I'm really glad that this isn't see-through right now. Right, so that's the meta. Uh, Samurai Buyer has a employee named Misaki who contacts English speaking uh, content creators, sends them boxes of stuff from Japan, they show it off and put links to Samurai Buyer in the description so then uh, they can go get, uh, they can go sell merchandise. Right? Basic concept. Now, while this is happening, while Misaki is sending out these packages, Meriwether is managing the Samurai Buyer Twitter. He is their social media manager. While Meriwether was the social media manager for Samurai Buyer, he made a couple of tweets that were, well, let's say not in the best taste. Still very clearly memes, but a lot of people took offense to them and started to really hate on him. But while he was making these memes that you might argue are in very poor taste, he exploded the Samurai Buyer Twitter account from like a thousand followers to I believe roughly about 14,000. Like, I don't think a 14 times increase in subscribe rate is something you can kind of just ignore. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, he, he was massively beneficial to that company. Now, on top of the memes that Meriwether made while he was a social media manager for Samurai Buyer, he had a interaction with Eat the Potato, which also got him canceled. Mary, as Samurai Buyer, would make a bunch of uh, comments in a really stereotypical Japanese accent, which is inarguably racist, but also he is working for a Japanese company and the things he's saying aren't that heinous, but unsurprisingly it pissed people off, so people called him out on it. For example, can I suggest something? Please don't use the slang Jap, and Samurai Buyer saying, but we are Japanese, even though we know that Meriwether is Danish. And I like this reply, then please stop being Japanese, <laughs> which is valid. Like Meriwether was 
objectively being obnoxious and people were getting annoyed. For example, he, you Reich anime by t-shirt, even though he's Danish and speaks flawless English, it's obnoxious. And here we get Jay, aka Eat the Potato, going, wow, that tagline is racist. Not racist if we are a Japanese company. And obviously he's just memeing around. He's memeing on someone who's trying to cancel him, which is honestly my strategy. If I ever get canceled, I'm just gonna meme on them just like Meriwether was. And obviously everyone is amused by this interaction. Some people are on the cancel Meriwether side. Some people are just like, hey, it's just memes. But they actually have a pretty long interaction that goes back and forth and where Eat the Potato actually tries to report him for being racist and saying racist companies have no business on my feed and Meriwether doubling down what the fuck? We are a Japanese company. Just being obnoxious about it. Continuing to meme on it. And everyone else is just like, what is she referring to about being racist? She's just shouting racist at everything. There's a large portion of people who think that Meriwether is just memeing and a lot of people who agree with her. And eventually Eat the Potato went ahead and blocked Samurai Buyer because he just didn't like her interactions with Meriwether. And uh, he even made a video, which is now deleted, so I can't show it to you, where he addresses the idea that Samurai Buyer is racist. I don't think anything he said as Samurai Buyer was intended to be malicious. I think he was just trying really hard to be funny and it was cringe by modern standards. I say modern standards, when, when was this? What, 20... Yeah, 2017. <laughs> this was five years ago. Why am I saying modern standards? <laughs> it's just current day standards. But being obnoxious, right? Now, I am relatively confident that Eat the Potato is the one who actually messaged me because if you follow my channel, you'll know that I got a anonymous message from Anime News Tip trying to get me to show all this information to cancel him. And like, why would 50% of the email be about Eat the Potato being annoyed by Meriwether as Samurai Buyer, unless it was Eat the Potato. You know what I'm saying? So she was so annoyed by Meriwether behaving obnoxiously on the Samurai Buyer Twitter that she, I'm almost positive this is her who emailed me and tried to get Meriwether canceled. Now the reason that this is relevant is because this actually ties in to Meriwether getting fired, which people almost universally think was a massive dick move which we'll get into in just a moment. Let me show you this. So Meriwether was actually in Japan working for Samurai Buyer, having massively boosted the success of this company, at least in its social media presence, which was his job. That was what he was supposed to do. And he got fired after moving to Japan to work for the company. And one of the reasons they stated was him being racist. They, cl they made like four-ish claims, but this is the one that's relevant to our claim. So his interactions on Twitter and his interactions with Eat the Potato are part of the stated reason he got fired. So Meriwether, after getting fired, actually clapped back on a massive twit longer. I, I won't go into all the details, but basically turns out Samurai Buyer is actually raising the prices and charging their customers hidden fees. And also the character of Misaki, who's been sending content creators all of these packages and pretending to have broken English and creating very funny dialogue and funny interactions, actually spoke fluent English and actually spent several years in Australia, possibly also in the United States. So Mary, after getting fired and getting canceled, fought back and proved that Misaki that everyone thought that Meriwether was the one being racist, but Masaki was being way more racist. There's this whole back and forth, and it's really complex. I encourage you to watch the video made by The Right Opinion. He covers this in like a one hour video, the whole drama with Samurai Buyer. It's really interesting. I strongly encourage you to look into that, but I'm, I'm gonna skip it for right now. But safe to say, Meriwether got into a lot of drama while working for Samurai Buyer but his clapback response was so solid, he basically uncanceled himself. In case I spoke too fast or in case that just didn't immediately click for you, let me run this by you one more time. Meriwether, while the social media manager for Samurai Buyer, got canceled online for using broken English and racist slang like Jap and yellow in his tweets to make jokes and make people laugh. At the exact same time this was happening, Misaki 
was contacting content creators with broken English and using self-deprecating racist jokes and pretending he didn't understand that they were racist in order to get a laugh out of the content creators so they would feature the conversations on their channels and endear the public to Misaki and therefore Samurai Buyer. Both of these people were doing the exact same thing and then Misaki has the nerve to fire Merriweather for doing exactly what he was doing. And then we find out that both of these people are white. Before you get angry at Merriweather for using broken English and Japanese stereotypes to get a laugh out of people, understand that the people who hired him and later fired him were doing the exact same thing and used it as an excuse to fire him. That doesn't fuck with your mind. I don't know what will. <laughs> So I hope that little nugget of irony doesn't let you know exactly how stupid the entire controversy is. There's a dozen other micro controversies surrounding Meriwether that I could cover in this video, but this video is already getting hella long and they're all kind of offshoots of the same vein. Either they don't like his comics, they don't like his opinions, or they just think that his jokes are, you know, cringy or offensive or whatever. All sort of offshoots of the same thing. People just don't like his personality. And the amount of hate and the amount of vitriol that this guy gets over basically just being himself on the internet is kind of insane. Like he's had to take down multiple, and I mean multiple tweets, because he just gets swamped with hate. Honestly, I feel like there's a broader conversation to be had about how when you make content for the internet, anything you do that people don't like, you will just get swamped just because you're popular enough to get enough eyes on you to annoy enough people. I feel like anyone, just about anyone, with a large enough following will just inevitably receive hatred just by existing without other people's consent. It is honestly astounding the way people don't recognize how when you send a hate tweet to someone or a hateful DM or YouTube comment or whatever, that person sees it and they read it and you're you, you might see yourself as a tiny speck lost in a, in a sea of other comments, but you're not. When you say something horrid to a content creator, if, another, if enough people agree with you, it gets upvoted, it gets likes, it gets traction, and we see it. So you might think that, oh, I'm just going to say something mean and they're never going to see it. A lot of the times we do, and it hurts. And every single person that does... You're piling on. You're becoming part of the problem. Every time you say something horrible, there's a chance it's going to get traction and you're going to be one of a hundred people that's just going to pile on the negativity that we don't need in the world. And with enough people shouting at us all these horrible opinions and hot takes and death threats and whatever, it, it really gets to us and it makes people you know, want to leave and stop producing content. And maybe you don't care if we stop, but all of our other fans do. And it is way easier to get impacted by a negative comment than a positive one. You can read through 10 positive comments and one person tells you to uh, go kill yourself or, you know, uh, tells you that they're going to show up at your house and kill your family. And that's going to be the one that sticks out at us for the rest of the day next few days. If it's heinous enough, sometimes it'll stick in our mind for like a week. So guys, be nice to each other. Content creators are just trying to entertain you. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean you have to give an opinion about it. If you don't like it, move on, mute, block, unsubscribe, whatever. You don't have to scream every negative thought you have out onto the internet. Uh, sorry for getting a little preachy at the end there. I just felt the need to send that out into the universe because I know there's a chance that this video is going to get some traction and people are going to see it. So be respectful, people. That is my video. That is everything I wanted to say about the Meriwether situation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
please, please, please like, comment, subscribe. I spent a total of like 16 or 17 hours across three days putting this video together. So if you would, you know, just do whatever you can to increase some engagement and get this video out there, it would help me tremendously. I'm, I'm just a tiny content creator and I'm, I'm trying to grow, guys. I'm trying to go. I want to make this my full-time job so I can not only put out more content, but better content. The more time I have to work on a video, the higher quality these videos become. Yeah, I love y'all. Bye. Thank you.